Good morning, Knox. Welcome to worship this morning, this beautiful, cold day in April. Um, I wish we were leaving out to bright sunshine, so we have a little bit of time. Maybe that'll still happen. Welcome to worship today. And we welcome our online community as well here with us today. Reverend Kathy is off today, but we have been blessed to have Reverend Emmanuel Mote Nadasa yes. okay. visiting with us today. As well, uh, we are thrilled that your family is here with you as well. So with our church family, we worship as a family, so we're thrilled that you as family have come to support your loved one as well. So um, Ariel and Daniel, welcome back. And uh, Martin and Irene, thank you for joining. And of course, your lovely bride, Bakia, thank you so much for being here today. We are, <clears throat> just a couple announcements from Kathy. There was a congregational email sent out on Friday regarding construction that will be starting in the coming days out here at, the, I guess, the side yard of the church. So you will not be able to access Knox coming off of Quebec Street. My understanding is, though, you will still be able to access it from Woolwich, so coming down Baker. If you need to get into the church or to the back doors at all, my understanding is you can still come in off of Woolwich. Just be prepared that there will be a downtown detour that you will need to get around. Additionally, I want to remind everybody in our community here today as well, and, and possibly even especially our community online, about the online survey. If there is anybody here today who has not heard about the online survey, please speak to me after the service or uh, any of the session elders. We would love to let you know. We are looking for feedback. The survey has been developed for everybody in the congregation, whether you are here in person or online following from somewhere in the world. We want to understand better what the needs are and how the current things happening in our outside community are impacting what's happening here in the church building. So please take an opportunity to follow the link. I believe that the information is on the website as well, that you can find the link for the survey. The mission committee would like me to say a big thank you to everybody for the wonderful collection of food for Giving Sunday. Um, this is a really awesome turnout. There will be another one in May, and I didn't get a chance to ask Mel what our total is, but I did challenge us all in January, so I will find out totals because I want to know how much I need to be pushing y'all anyways. Uh, so thank you so much to everybody who contributed today, to those who have sent in cash donations. Everything works towards our grand total, and we know that it is going to very wonderful sources in our community and helping people out. Folks who do not have access to computer, just a reminder that there is a binder at each of the exits that have the announcements in there if you would like to read them. Everything has been sent out on email, but if you didn't get Friday's email, I believe that they have been added to the binder. Okay, and the last message I have is from Reverend Emmanuel, and it's for the kids. So if you are under the age of 20 today, I will be coming and finding you. I have a little bit of homework for you during the service from Reverend Emmanuel so that you will be ready for the theme conversation. And he is looking for you to take some time during the beginning of the service to process this picture. Take a look at it and see what stands out to you. What is something powerful in this picture, something that is special to you, okay? So that's going to be part of the theme conversation. And you know what? There's a couple extras here, so I may even hand it to a couple other people. Dale. All right, my friends. That is it for announcements this morning, unless anybody else has anything else that they would like to add. Okay, thank you. So with that, let us move into worship today. Our Bible is here, sitting front and center reminding us that Jesus is indeed the forefront of our worship and a reminder of why we are here. Have a blessed Sunday.
I invite you to come with me to the call to worship. Jesus the Christ said, I am the good shepherd. We gather in the name of the one who leads us by still waters. We have come to be restored in him. We gather in the name of the one who prepares a banquet for us. We have come to be fed by his love, so let us worship God. We come to God, our holy shepherd, as we come to a green meadow. How excellent is this dwelling place under the eyes of God's care. We turn to God in joy. Our good shepherd provides for all our needs. Jesus, the good shepherd, calls our names to come and follow him. His voice speaking our names draws us to him. We follow without fear, for the shepherd cares for us. So come, let us enter the gate with thanksgiving. Let us go forth confidently with songs of praise. And so we praise God by singing the hymn, Savior, like a shepherd, lead us 485. Let us pray. Loving God, our shepherd, guide and giver of life, you nourish our lives and lead us into green pastures. You restore our souls with rest and peace. You give us joy so our lives overflow with goodness and grace. You walk with us through the darkest valleys, offering us courage and compassion at all times and in all circumstances. You are with us. You are our creator. 
You are the Christ and the Holy Spirit. So we praise you, Holy One, here and now, and always patient and loving God. We stand at the gate and peer through. We keep creating our own ways, believing that we know what is in our best interest. And we keep ignoring the voice of the one and only shepherd who will guide us to places of peace and hope. Help us to stop and listen to our shepherd's voice. Help us, dear God, to place our trust in you because you are the good shepherd. You never fail us. You love and you guide us. Forgive us our stubbornness. For we ask this in Christ's name. God of mercy. You lead us. There is good news, and here is good news. Even though we have wandered and have become lost, the shepherd calls us. We can place our trust in his love and care, for we are the sheep of his pasture, blessed and given hope. Amen. There is a river. Grace to you and peace from our God, our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ.
Let us bow our heads for a prayer of illumination. God of word and wisdom, send us your Holy Spirit as we listen to the witness of your people in the scriptures. May we claim the story of your redeeming love again and praise you with our lives through Christ our Lord and guide. Amen. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 23 in the Red Psalter. And we're going to read this in unison, singing refrain number one. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord makes me lie down in green pastures, leads me beside still waters, restores my soul, and leads me in right paths for the sake of the Lord's name. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for the length of my days. And our scripture reading this morning is from John 10, 11 to 18. I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version. I am the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away, and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. This is the word of the Lord. Yes, I'm looking forward to interacting with the younger generation. So, do you want to sit down? Good. I wish I were as old as you. How old are you? Ten. How many? Ten. 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 And how old are you? Five. And what do you do here? One. One. <laughs> ah. Okay. Great. Now, to today, we want to think about what it means to be a good shepherd. 
that could be shepherds at the risk a good one. And that's why 21st century. Are we good to go? Is that better? Oh my goodness. I'm coming from very far away. Sorry about that. Okay. Having looked at this picture, it's the same picture for everybody. Would you mind just telling us something you find amazing about the picture? What do you like about this picture? And if there's something you do not like about that picture, you just let us know. What do you think? Let me, yeah? I like how the shepherd is the only one who is white on them. Great, great. You like something about the shepherd, right? Beautiful. What, did you, what do you think about the shepherd? What is special about the shepherd? Is there something special? Do you see something special? Yes? Sort of like he's standing up to the walls. Like... Exactly. You see, he's like, right? And what's, what's the group of animals that's facing him? Yeah, Daniel? The wolves. The wolves. And now you tell me, are these best, best of friends, these wolves and the sheep? Yeah. Why? The wolves want to eat the sheep. The it's very unfriendly, right? Does it sound like you having some untrusted friend? Yeah. yeah. And you're wary about this kind of people, right? Hmm. I think you're getting it right. Okay, so apart from the shepherd, what is, what is particular? What other thing do you see which is interesting? My sermon is preached. <laughs> My sermon is done. And so, can I borrow your picture? For your observation, this may look like too far away, but you see, the sheep decide to stay behind the shepherd. That's what he just told us. Why wouldn't the sheep scatter and just try to go around the shepherd? Please just take a look. Um, it's too far. Sorry about that. But that's the shepherd. And right behind the shepherd, let me do it this way. Children, let me use. I don't intend to say you are animals. No. So that's his position. And right behind him are the sheep. For some curious reason, and I, I want to congratulate you. Give me a high five here. Super. If these were sheep with some kind of wayward behavior, they would have been going left, right, in, in separate directions, which they don't do. They prefer to take a position behind the shepherd. And I like his remark, because this is, for me, a turning point in our conversation about John chapter 10. It's a turning point in how we understand the good shepherd. And that's why I said, my sermon is done through the eyes of the children. Could we please applaud the children? Thank you, children. Thank you. Thank you. You can now take your seat. Thank you. Whose picture is this? Right. If you want to, you can take it down. The picture is yours. Yes, the scene. Let's go ahead.
beloved brothers and sisters, dear siblings in God, make out the good shepherd. Make out the good shepherd. I'm very sincere to say the children preached the sermon already, and so I wouldn't want to take too much of our time. There is a shepherd motif that spans the entire Bible. And again, like I said, I have no intention of walking you one by one through these motives from Old to New Testament. But permit me to do something to walk you through two of these shepherd motives, one from Genesis and the other from Revelation. So as if to say, I am acknowledging the fact that God remains the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the author and perfecter of who we are. And so in Genesis chapter 48, in verse 15, on Jacob's dying bed, Jacob remarked that God had been shepherd all of his life till that day and on his dying bed. And in Revelation chapter 7, in verse 17, we read in there that when the saints who are brought out of tribulation show up before God, there is a lamb sitting at the center of the throne. And that lamb shall be their shepherd. And that lamb shall lead them to springs of water that gives life. And God shall wipe away every tear. Beloved in God, there are images that have an immediate effect upon the mind and they leave a lasting impression. When you catch a glimpse of these images, the body relaxes, the soul warms up, our minds open up, and the image of the Good Shepherd is one of such lasting images. Thank God for the Psalm 23 from which we read. Very popular Psalm. Psalm that is memorized from very early on in life, Sunday school days. It's a passion for some people who even take Psalm 23 as their umbrella, they take cover, because they know they're dealing with a God who will not forsake, a God who will stand up to the wolf. Beloved brothers and sisters, especially in the first centuries, the image of the good shepherd had a prominent place among early Christ movements. From all the images of God that we can think about as the castle, God the light, God the rock, of all the great I am's saying of Jesus Christ that we know, I am the door, I am the bread of life, I am the vine, I am the truth, I am the way, and today I am the good shepherd. Of all of these powerful sayings, Christians in the first, second, and sometimes third centuries chose the image of the good shepherd to be a symbol of identity and so long, you know, long time before the cross became our symbol of identity, the good shepherd motive had been our symbol of common destination. I would like to rush forward with an Old Testament imagery of the Good Shepherd. And just to recount this, 
without trying to pay too much attention to the details. Ezekiel chapter 34. And in this chapter, God is clear about a certain model of leadership. This is one thing we have to understand about the shepherd image in the Old Testament. It was not just attributed to men or women who were in charge of some kind of livestock, animals like sheep or cows or whatever. It was also a kind of label for those who had offices of leadership. And so you can talk about people who are in civil offices, who are guiding the functioning of society, how society is guided. These were shepherds of their own right. And then permit me bring it right down to say our families are the smallest units of society. And therefore, each family should have its own model of shepherding. There must be a way that each home should say, this is the shepherd. Of course, God is our shepherd. And so, like I'm saying, before the cross became our, our symbol of common salvation, this good shepherd motif was our symbol of common destination. I spoke about Ezekiel. In Ezekiel, God, the supreme shepherd, takes a position. Why? For the same reason that Jesus speaks in the second part of our reading in John 10 about shepherds who don't have the best interest of the sheep. And so those ones who compromise the welfare of the sheep simply because, well, we are just doing our job, but we can't risk our lives because we are getting paid. This is the point. And that speaks to the choice of my theme for this morning. Beloved people of God. It wasn't very easy for me to settle for that, but by my own faith and my own judgment, I think this passage from John chapter 10 speaks to us differently. Of course, God loves us. And so we take it for granted that no matter how far we go, no matter how much we deviate, God will always be there to secure us. Today I stand to challenge that and to speak differently to this text. Beloved brothers and sisters, the friends of God, in John chapter 10, Jesus says, I know my sheep. Part one of the bargain. Jesus knowing his sheep. That's the first part of the bargain. And what does he say? My sheep know me. And this is the dimension of this story, which is always very, very little talked about. The second dimension of it, the responsibility of the sheep to identify and follow the shepherd. I read the story of a group of shepherds from the Holy Land. Three of them came to water their sheep by the spring. And you know these animals, because they needed to refresh, they just mingled, they intermingled among themselves, haphazardly. Three groups of large sheep, and they just intermingled among themselves. And you would wonder how they were going to, how the shepherds were like going to identify their, their sheep at the end of the day. And then one of them goes left and starts just ranting some kind of thing, and he was just ranting some kind of thing which didn't, it wasn't familiar with um, human understanding. That's not human language, but he was just doing it. And then a group of sheep just walked, off, and they were just going. Yeah. And then a second shepherd stood on the other side and did the same thing, and then another group of sheep just went its way. And the third one, until there were three distinct 
distinct clusters of sheep. And no shepherd raised a voice to say he had a strange animal in his cluster. That is the second dimension of this story of John 10 I'm telling you about. Namely that we live in times where there's a cacophony of voices beckoning on our attention and our loyalty. And sometimes it gets so rowdy that we even beg for answers to the question, whom shall we follow? You know, another little story I just want to mention to you is the story of two men who were walking through a village and discovered a man, a shepherd, leading his sheep through the village to go graze them. But they discovered this man was leading the sheep in a very unusual way. And one of these guys turned around and said to his friend, I thought shepherd lead their sheep. They don't drive them with a whip. And the other guy said to him, you are right, that's true. Shepherds don't drive their sheep, they lead them. But that's not a shepherd, that's the village butcher. Okay. And shepherds could also tend the flock, because this is what First Peter tells us. Tend. Care. John 21. Care for my sheep. Jesus says to Peter three times, care. And care and care. It has to do with moving beyond head, head knowledge to heart knowledge. It's not just a question of intuition. Yeah. Beloved brothers and sisters, it's interesting that sheep know very well that they owe themselves a duty to their safety. And so, they do master the voice of their shepherd not to get caught up in the wrong cluster. Here we are. We are also a model of a flock. And I want to skip through that, that the, the significance of being in the flock. There's sometimes when our theology has victimized sheep so much, trying to paint them as, well, being stupid, not knowing right from left. But let me tell you something. I don't want to keep you in this church house till evening because the children have preached the sermon. The fact that the sheep took a position behind their shepherd was a mark of trust. It was a mark of trust. They knew this guy standing in front of us is able to keep us safe. And they knew this guy can fight. This guy is ready to give up everything. Just that you and I will stay safe. That's the Jesus of Easter for you and myself. And that's the good news. Let me end with this story. Somewhere in Pretoria, South Africa, in a Reformed church, Christians go to worship. And fortunately, they were doing something I guess your congregation is familiar with also. So it's a kind of healing service, and people have to come forward for anointing to receive the oil. And then, among these people who are coming, is a seven-year-old young man, like your son, you know? And then they realize this seven-year young man comes the first time and takes an anointing. People fire pass and fire pass. He comes the second time and takes an, 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 another anointing. And people still fire pass. He comes the third time. And the pastor who is doing the anointing is very keen to realize this guy has, this young man has been here three times. Something is not right here. So when this young man comes to take his anointing the fourth time, 
one of the pastors who wasn't actually involved with signing the oil and the believers took the young man to the side and whispers in his ears, Hi, Jim, I realize you've been here four times for the same anointing. What's happening with you? And this young man looks at the pastor and says, Pastor, let me tell you something, please. Each time I come here and I take my anointing, that pastor sitting over there takes it away. Oh, my goodness. And the pastor is like, really? Is that why you came four times? He says, Pastor, I want my anointing to stay. They do a fourth anointing and this little boy goes. And definitely they are not spending the whole day in church. They have to close. But after that, some questioning has to be done. Some finding has to be done. Only for people to come to a realization, which is a sad one for the history of the church and its own crimes, that this young man has been a victim to this pastor. That, that was a story. And this tells you that right there, there is a leadership which is not a shepherd. There's a leadership which is a butcher. But then God has given us a sense of discernment which is very powerful. And that's why he's given us his spirit. God has blessed all of us with that sense of discernment that would permit us to distinguish his voice from all the noises of our time. 21st century. The one which is coming right now. You hear it every day, artificial intelligence. Very soon humans will cease to exist. Which voice do we want to hear? I leave you, brethren, believing that God will touch you in a special way. The voices are too many. But we all are looking for what the psalmist says in Psalm 23. He leads his sheep to pools of fresh water, to pockets of fresh grass. And that's my blessing for all of you. You should find fresh water and you should find places of fresh grass. That's what you need. God wants you to be strong you will find quiet waters, not turbulent waters. Remember what he says in Isaiah 43? Even if you face turbulent waters, you will not be destroyed. God is faithful. And I leave you with that message. Let God bless you. Amen.
At this offering time and treasure, I am thankful that our Seniors Connecting at Knox in-person lunches will be starting up again this coming Thursday. I am appreciative of our volunteers who will be giving of their time in various ways by preparing our advertising poster, keeping an accurate list of those riding on our complimentary bus, preparing senior name tags, greeting seniors on their arrival, preparing and serving our homemade lunch, and crafting table centerpieces. I am grateful to those people and organizations who are sponsoring our complimentary bus transportation and our feature entertainment event. I am also thankful to those volunteers who will carry on to deliver our frozen soup lunches as they will continue to be delivered to those seniors who are shut-ins on the Saturday following our in-person lunches. These truly are signs of countless ways of expressing gratitude and support for both these seniors' programs. Let us bow our heads in prayer. All good gifts come from you, O Lord, and from these riches we bring this offering. Help us to be generous givers, both of our money and our lives, that we might make a difference in Knox and our community. We thank you for your blessings. Amen. invite all of us now to pray. God of love, we offer you, your church, in a new way that you will be a blessing to this place where we meet. Remembering especially every congregation within the Presbyterian Church in Canada that you will reveal yourself to us in a very special and strong way. It's been a hard time for everybody, dear God. But we pray especially for those who haven't been able to share physically among us. We pray you to be a blessing to our friends who follow us from home on digital platforms, that you will speak power to their situation and bless them with a sense of community, that they can come back into your house of worship, that our joy and celebration will be full and complete. We acknowledge our longings to sing together, to touch one another, to give one another a hug. And we remember, too, our duty as under-shepherds of the Great Shepherd, to be protective of those you give us charge over. Lord, in your mercy, may justice and peace reign in our world. So, God of love, you did not send Jesus into this world to condemn it, but to save it. We pray for the leadership of the world, especially for countries which are in turmoil of war. Come in a new way and visit the Holy Land. Father, quiet the voices of weapons of destruction Quiet the voices of offensive tempers. Heal our wounds. Reconcile us where there are disagreements. 
We pray you for people who face poverty. We pray you for people who are persecuted because they love Jesus Christ. Where human leadership has failed us, dear God, take over like you promised in the days of Ezekiel. Take over. Open the ears of leaders of nations to your words of justice and peace. Lord, in your mercy. Father, you say you are a balm which is in Gilead, and your people must not be sick. We come with our broken bodies before you, asking for divine healing. Father, be a blessing to Lorraine and to John, whom we live before you now, knowing that you will visit them and be a blessing unto their health through the work of doctors and nurses and the medications they will take, that they will recover, feel stronger, receive your peace and comfort. Lord, in your mercy. We acknowledge, Heavenly Father, that you are our shield and defender, and we thank you for this. Thank you for staying with us when we face danger. Thank you, dear God, as we pray for all those who live in fear, prisoners, those who are in exile, refugees, victims of oppression, those who face racism of all kinds, hatred. And we thank you because you are at their defense. You're fighting and doing the job of a good shepherd. So show us how we can be part of your redeeming work in caring for this earth and sharing what we have with those in any kind of need. Hear us, even as we make this prayer, which Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, We have one hymn to sing, what a friend we have in Jesus, number 746, 746.
In this moment when we receive our benediction, do me a favor, please, if you can. If you can, just do me a favor. The person to your right or to your left, if you can just touch this person by the shoulder, that's fine for me. Yeah, if you can touch that person by the shoulder. Is that okay? Great. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you for doing that. I, I want your hand to stay there. It's fine. If it's somebody you want to hug, feel free to hug this person. And now you go in love. Go with the peace of Christ within you. And be witnesses to his love and truth. And act like good shepherds. And may God's resurrecting love open your future. Empower you with the Holy Spirit. And embrace you with the love of Christ, our risen good shepherd. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us today and forever. Amen.